Anyway, let's watch this video. We've been talking about FF for too long. This is we're supposed to be playing Dark Souls. I don't know if we're gonna get to that tonight. Y'all got me like yapping. Did streamers really ruin gaming, or are you just trash? In this video, I'm gonna talk about gaming before streaming was popular. Cell couldn't and get to the game she promised to stream. And by the okay, I'll get to you in a second. Hold on. No movie. We have what just happened? What was that? Did it just refresh? What just happened? This video, you'll have an answer on if streaming really ruined gaming or not. Now, a few months ago, I was actually scrolling through Twitter and I saw this tweet right here that says, Dominating blue collar workers in Battlebit. If you don't know what Battlebit is, well, it's basically like Battlefield and Roblox, and this is pretty much the whole clip. Yeah, pretty much that guy is just straight up dominating people like that. Yeah, I saw this a while back. Playing a. I don't know if you guys play any shooters. Playing, to be honest, I'm not complaining, but still. You were complaining last night. You were calling stream boring. You were calling the, 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 the fun stream we had the other day boring. I yap, I get yelled at. I don't yap, I get yelled at. But I don't know if anybody else stepped away from shooters and then came back. It is so annoying to play against people like that when you just are in a casual yep, we yep, talked yep, about yep, this to the video <laughs> we we talked about this yesterday at length but it is really annoying when you just want to come home and play some apex or something by the way don't boot up apex right now anti-cheat for that game might be compromised to the point of putting actual malware on your computer so yeah i would avoid apex in any game using easy anti-cheat right now i haven't dug too far into it so do your own research, but just a heads up, <laughs> that might be a thing. Anyway, it is just really annoying when you're hopping into a casual match and you're wanting to fuck around and have fun, but you get a sweat lord that literally has a gun to their head. It feels like if they don't play well, it's like, dude, you can calm down. It's not that serious. It's casual. You don't need to be running the crazy metal loadout. Didn't FromSoft get shut down for like a year or a couple months because of something like that? Yeah, I believe it was a similar, ex uh, not exploit, but a similar situation. It might have been. I don't think it was REC. I think it's called REC. I don't, I can't remember what the acronym is off the top of my head. Um, remote executed code, though. I feel like it was. So yeah, maybe. You might be right. And they were down for like a year. And the fact that Apex is still up right now is insane to me. That's pretty much it. And I saw a quote tweet that said, Esports ruined casual gaming. Now, I know the whole title of this video is like something along the lines of how streamers ruined gaming, but I'm going to put streamers and esports kind of in the same category. I say that because with streaming, you kind of got to either be good at a game or funny. And with esports, you got to be good at a game. So I'm going to put them both. Where do I land on that scale? Welcome to Cell Streams, where Cell might do what the, the title says, but gets distracted. <laughs> Results vary. <laughs> On the trash? What do you mean? I'm good at video games. I'm going to measure my parse in FF14 one time, and then that's going to be my parse forever. No matter how good or bad I get, we're going we're gonna to label me as that. So if it comes out as an orange parse on something, y'all zip so it. Cell, did you beat Stop Jack talking. 2 without dying yet? You beat Jack 2 without dying. That game's a nightmare. We haven't beat Jack 1 without dying. Both together because they're pretty similar, if I do say so myself. But to really understand this, we got to go all the way back to 2018. Oh no, the it's Fortnite rewind time. Boom. Before Fortnite was this cringe cash grab that pretty much just preyed on little kids for money, it was a game that nobody truly knew how to play and everyone had fun with it. I mean, back in 2018, every single human being was talking about Fortnite. I mean, back you guys remember when Fortnite was a survival game that Rooster Teeth played? <laughs> do you guys remember that? Wait, do you guys remember? There's no time. Do you guys remember this? This game was awesome. <laughs> this is one of the OG really hard platformers. Back then, you had Fortnite meme pages. Every single human being was posting their wins. People were doing emotes IRL. Fortnite. God damn. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Fortnite. Does it mean I'm old if I look at that and go, I would die? The infamous ninja clip. I feel like that means I'm old now. 
this clip was so just you Fortnite could feel so it <laughs> one thing that also became popular because of Fortnite was streaming back then twitch was like pretty niche but i'd say that Fortnite made twitch more mainstream and you may be asking why did people go to twitch and not youtube well the thing about youtube is that a lot of youtube videos are edited and some people they may be good on youtube but it's like on twitch twitch is live twitch is raw so if you lose like people are gonna see you lose and if you win people are gonna see you win and that's why twitch was so popular because you could see high level gameplay in real time to determine if somebody was truly good all you had to do was just watch them on twitch and with twitch becoming so popular some streamers that a bunch of people were watching back then was people like myth ninja dr lupo nick Merckx. The whole but no have you guys ever speaking of the twitch.tv like go on stream you can see if they're doing bad, like poorly or doing really well instantly this is a very specific competitive scene thing but you're playing in casual or you're playing a not serious playlist and you're just getting just Chat, sweet. Do you think you're... Cell was around for the original SNES? I can answer that, but I'll let you guys figure that out. But you're getting completely dumped on. You're you're just not doing well and someone with dot like with TTT or TTV and or YT or kick or whatever and not kick. Um what was the other thing? What was the other plat mixer or something in their fucking name is sweating their ass off. And then you go to their channel and they're either not live. So they're just sweating for no reason off of stream in a casual or less competitive scenario or Lime TV. What is Lime TV? What is that? I've never heard of that. Lime TV, formerly known as Wisdom Television, is now defunct as a traditional TV network and instead focuses, focused and expanded into digital media. The current Lime online website offers information and entertainment centered on physical and mental health with a soft focus on or organic ingredients, whole, fu whole, foods? whole foods consumption, mental conditioning through meditation and yoga, and physical fitness. Up until 2007, Lime's programming was available on certain digital cable and satellite systems. All you had to do was just watch them on Twitch. And with Twitch becoming so popular, some streamers that a bunch of people were watching back then was people like Myth, Ninja, Dr. Lupo, Nick Merckx. The whole Ninja versus Myth argument was like the biggest topic in school. I remember I was back in like freaking 10th grade and we were arguing at lunch tables talking about if Myth or Ninja was better. I'm not gonna lie, back then I was Bruh. team Myth. But with all those popular streamers and pro players being in the limelight, that made more people want to be a pro player slash streamer. I mean, did y'all see how some of these Fortnite teams were getting down bro i'm telling you if i had to crank a few 90s to be a freaking fortnite pro back then I, I probably would and that's exactly where the downfall of gaming happened everyone started focusing on the money you can make from gaming rather than the fun from gaming fortnite used to be this game where you try to win by doing these creative strats like building a sky base building a huge metal base or maybe even camping in a bush but i don't think it was strictly the money that everyone was focusing on that caused the problem like we'll get to it later but i i, I... I feel like that's too, too easy. I'm, I'm not going to say it's not a big part of it, but I feel like a lot of the driving factor was simply wanting to be a, as good as somebody more so than making a lot of money. Granted, there is a lot to be said about how often younger people are when asked hey what do you want to do it's like oh i want to be a twitch streamer i want to be a youtuber i want to you know i want to do this so definitely part of it is money but i don't think it's the end all be all then it turned into this huge sweat fest when people saw that you could make abnormal amounts of money from this game. Back then, if you shot at a dude, they would probably start shooting at you back like they wouldn't even build. But now, if you shoot at somebody in Fortnite, they're building a whole freaking skyscraper hotel. <laughs> hell with wi-fi it's actually wild now let me say this right now i do also say that that's kind of just time like with time people get better but my point is that everyone's playing games to be the best rather than to just have fun with their boys everyone is playing to be watched on twitch or watched on youtube I'm part of me wants to part of me is wondering did i fall victim to this as well because i'm very competitive you can see it when I play games with Shad. You can see it when I play games on this stream that are sometimes even remotely 
in the realm of me versus someone else. I I feel like I am the first to start talking shit. I'm the first to start tryharding. I'm the first to sweat usually in my group of friends. And granted, I am falling out of that a little bit and it's turning into more of a like haha humorous competitive Instead of a genuine like, no, I need to win. I have to win. I If I don't win, I've wasted my time. It used to be that. But I don't know if for me it was always from a place of, oh man, there's a Twitch streamer that I've, I'm pl- like, I've seen that I want to be better than. Or there's someone on YouTube whose strat I'm trying. Or it, it was always a local sweat comparison of, man, my friend is better than me. I can't have that. I no, I like I can do better, so I'm gonna try to overtake them on the leaderboard. I found it. It was D Live. Never heard of that. Never heard of that. I mean, you ever play a game and you get killed by somebody with a TTV gamer tag, and you go to their Twitch and they're not streaming at all? They're just sweating just to. Yep. Like everyone is just playing for that top spot. Yep. In that top spot, you can make content out of it, and with that content comes a whole lot of money. Unless you're playing like Farming Simulator and you're a pro, I don't don't really think you make a lot of money from like Pro Farming Simulator. But I don't know. I I might become a Farming Simulator pro. You never know. Bars. But yeah. How many people are streaming Farming Sim? Is there a lot of people on farming sim? Is that even a category on Twitch that's like populated? Farming Simulator 2022. 485 viewers. All right, new stream goal. I want to t- I want to take over this category at some point. <laughs> the second most viewed is 48 people. I know we got a little bit to go, but this would be this would be a fun category to just pop into one day. <laughs> Everyone's pretty much playing to be watched. I remember back then, games wouldn't really get sweaty until like two or three weeks after release. But now, games are sweaty off the rip. It can be five days away from Call of Duty coming out, and you already got a dude making a video saying best class setup 2023 MW3, and it's like God, those game thumbnails hasn't even were released. Insane. It can be two weeks before 2K comes out, and a dude already has the best yeah. build. It makes no sense. And when the game comes out, people are only gonna play the meta because when you only play the meta, you can win more, and when you win more, you can get up to that top rank and when you get up to that top rank you can stream create content from it more people are going to watch you because you're up high on the leaderboards and then the cycle just continues and continues and continues and now everyone's just playing the same yep. because everyone's just trying to be the best to be able to stream it slash be that's watched. what it feels like you would play games for the fun because there was really no money involved but now it's like every single human being is trying to become the top streamer and it's like bro like where's the fun in that back then gaming tournaments were giving out speckles i'm telling Telling you if you want a gaming tournament for like freaking Mortal Kombat or Halo or something like that, you were probably gonna get 50 cents in a Big Mac. But now, if you win a freaking Fortnite tournament or you just win a freaking Call of Duty tournament, dog, you're honestly set. You can buy your mom a freaking mansion. People are getting millions from tournaments. I mean, look at Booga, bro. Didn't he? He won like three million, I'm pretty sure, off of Fortnite. How much? 16 wins, World Cup singles, and three million dollars. I mean, they've just become more publicized. So- the prizes are larger but it is a giant jump but it's i guess it's what i said last night this whole video is about what the commodification of of gaming has become popped up in my recommendations i'm here to vibe for a bit hey welcome in we usually do ff14 but we're we're racked in right now so might be a little quiet at times while we're watching but Hopefully you enjoy it. Hope your day's been going well. Pokemon theme plays. I want to be the very best thing no one ever was. <laughs> like, I said it last night, but I think it's the commodification of playing games that has created this hard race to, hey, I got the best meta for Omega Strikers. It's been out for eight hours. You got to play as, as a, shoot, what is her name? As... Oh my god, it's the character I main too. You gotta play as 
Julia. And you need to use these abilities. And they're usually not wrong, but it does take a lot of the fun out of it, especially when you're hitting the, the ranked playlist and that's all you're getting. You're getting these Juliets that are just being slap happy with some of their crowd control abilities. As a Juliet player, back when Omega Strikers came out, I, yes. And I say this as a Counter-Strike player. I say this as someone who played Apex for a long time. Hey, thank you for selling out, Lazy. Hope you enjoy your time. Also, Cyber, I fuck with your avatar. Glad you like it. That is wild. That is insane money. Another thing about gaming after streaming is that games that aren't even sweaty are becoming sweaty. For example, Fall Guys. I remember back in 2020, every single human being was playing Fall Guys during quarantine. And with everybody playing Fall Guys, TikTok got a hold of that. And I remember scrolling through TikTok one day and I saw this one dude making videos of the best strats on certain maps on Fall Guys. And I just thought to myself, what do you gain from being a sweat in Fall Guys? What do you gain? Like, I understand you're trying to show people how to win and stuff but i feel like the reason why fall guys was so fun was because nobody was making strats or anything people were just hopping in having fun just playing like headless chickens you know i feel like games die out quicker when you're making all these strats and stuff on how to win when it's not even like obviously yes the goal in fall guys is to win but i feel like the whole point of that game is to enjoy the journey like the fun with friends the freaking hurdles you're going over that one dude griefing you on the map like when you're only focused on trying to get crowns in that game the game becomes less fun because because you're just focusing on the destination. You know, we talked about this a little bit. Of, I want to say a week ago, two weeks ago, when I brought up a Josh Stripe Hayes video, which is, <laughs> I've been talking about him a lot lately, but his have guides ruined gaming. And everything he's saying about if all you're doing is focusing on winning, you're taking the fun out of the game. I feel like there's a better way to, way to phrase it that people will understand a little more because, yeah, winning is... It, it, I Fall Guys is at its core com, like it is competitive to a degree. It, the goal is winning. The goal is therefore a competitive thing. Fall Guys itself might be a casual container, but it, what it's wrapping around is still a competitive thing at its core. And optimizing out the fun and optimizing out your time with the game is something that you can see in Monster Hunter. You can see it in FF14, which I want to talk about later. You can see it in, like he's saying right now, Fall Guys. You can see it in Counter-Strike. You can see it in Warzone. You can see it in every game that you probably have in your Steam library to some degree. And it's frustrating. I can optimize the fun out of Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight. I can tell you right now. Go uh, go through the tutorial. Kill Adia. Get Adia's Pearl. That gives you poison on your arrows. I believe there's a sachet or something you get from either Lu not Lubella because she gives you the Bachmon patch. You get it from one of the bosses which allows you to heal from being poisoned. Or it's, no, it might be a ring that you buy on a bear. Whatever. It allows you for, to heal from being poisoned. So you can essentially optimize out damage from the game. So that any boss that's giving you trouble, you shoot a wall, arrow bounces off, drifts past you, poisons you. Now you have unlimited health regen. Now the boss has no threat. You've optimized out the fun. Yes, you were clever and smart, but now there's no threat. Now the fight doesn't have any stakes. Now there's nothing to really gain in terms of experience from the repetition of remaining in that world or re-experiencing the fight or just spending time fighting enemies in general because why does it matter if you can just heal yourself forever? In Monster Hunter, all I got to do is go get some attack jewels, get the correct armor set up so I'm immune to roar stuns. I'm immune to uh, taking most of the basic hits if my iframes are large enough that I can be lazy with my dodging and then get a big enough weapon like the Nurgle Adjudicator Axe and I can stun lock every Elder Dragon that I want to. I have a video of me stun locking Kushala Dora in one spot for a good five minutes with a, a weapon that's not even an in-game weapon because I stacked my stats the right way. And then the drag is not fun to fight. So I'm going to get bored of the game. And then I can be one of those people that go, oh, man, this one just wasn't that good. The old Monster Hunter was better. Or the old insert game here was better because of X reason. When in reality, it's, well, how'd you play the last one? Did you optimize out your fun? 
Did you optimize out the struggles that you had in the last one that created all of your core memories from it? Because we were talking about that a moment ago was my favorite memories of, I, what did I say it was? I believe I said it was, was it Counter-Strike? Crap, this was like 40 minutes ago when I said this. My favorite memories from a lot of games I played as a kid or even just as a teenager were moments where I was suffering, honestly, where I was having a bad time or struggling and either overcame it in the moment or I got better later to make it so that didn't happen again. And back. Welcome back, Double. And I think a lot of people do that with guides. I, I think guides have negative... Over-reliance on guides. I want to be clear on that because we talked about this yesterday. Over-reliance on guides has explicitly ruined the longevity of a lot of games. Not even multiplayer games. Single-player games suffer from it greatly. There, there are so many people that min-max in Monster Hunter. It's not fun to play with them. And they probably burn through it, dump 600 hours into it, and then they're done with it forever. And they're like, world wasn't that good. Is world that good? Is it really only as good as you say it is? Or is it only as good as you made it? Because it feels like you made it as good as it was, which wasn't very good. I've made it a point to only use a guide if I absolutely need help. Yeah, I think that's the best way to play games. I, I mentioned it on stream yesterday, but I use guides on stream when stream is stopping because of something that's not going to be fun to sit and watch me do. If it's a puzzle that isn't going to be satisfying, I'm just going to pull a guide up. But if it's a puzzle that's fun, I'm going to get you all involved or try to and be like, hey, what do you guys think? How should we like, you know, proceed here? Remember, remember Tulip? Exactly. Remember the guy that showed up in my comment? That guy, I, I'm sorry. I need to immortalize that man. That is my favorite comment still that I've gotten on a YouTube video. The dude set to, for people that don't know, we played a game called Tulip. It is a very old, very esoteric, very Japanese little RPG. And when I say very Japanese, I mean at its core, you can tell it was developed by a Japanese developer. And that means it was clearly made to get you to buy a guide. And if you didn't buy a guide, you're not going to beat this game. We didn't have a guide. So there were moments where we used Cheat Engine to speed up time or I, we used a guide. And this comment that we got, I bet I could still probably find it on that video, was from someone who made it two hours into like a four and a half hour VOD going on a multi-paragraph rant about how we're a disgrace to streamers or YouTubers because we looked at a guide for Tulip, one of his favorite games from his childhood, and how dare we. And <laughs> this is the problem with streamers today. They're lazy. And no, it's not that. It's not that simple. The, on stream, my priority is to make sure things are moving. My priority is to make sure people aren't explicitly getting bored. And I, I, I want to make sure stream is something that keeps everyone distracted. And Did I take Tulip down? I don't even see it. It's not even coming up when I search it. Tulip might be gone. Umbral era streams. Yeah, it might be there. I don't I don't think I can search through a whole playlist. I don't know if it'll let me. YouTube's very weird with how it lets you search through things. Yeah, Tulip isn't even coming up there. I think I may have taken Tulip down or it's unlisted. Like fully, fully. It might be like private. Yep, Tulip is not on the channel anymore. That is gone. Okay. Well. Anyway. Guides are not inherently bad. Optimization isn't, isn't inherently bad. It's when you let it become your main focus when you're playing the game that I think it becomes a bad idea. That's just my opinion, though. I don't use guides in FF14. There... I bitch about how much gill I have and how much gill I don't have all the time. I have not looked up a gill guide once. I don't. 
the way I make money in that game right now is I fish for items that people don't want to fish for because they're quest items. And then I sell them on the market board at a reasonable price. That is how I make money in FF14. And I have fun doing it. I could look up a guide. I could look, look up one of those make a million gil in an hour, make two million gil in an hour guides and probably do it. But it's funner to work for it and actually engage with the game and allow moments to happen like what happened on stream. Was it on stream or off stream? I think it was off stream where someone sent a, a shout in Gridania and was like, hey, uh, I'm in the bar. I'm at the Caroline Canopy. I'll give 3 million gil to whoever lets me pet them. And I sent him a message and I was like, serious? Really? <laughs> Where are you at? And then I walked in. They walked up. They slash pet my character, gave me gill, and I said, "Wait, really?" And they said, "Yeah, enjoy." And they walked away. <laughs> it's a very weird experience. But if I had gone through this min max situation, had thirty million gill, why would I say yes to that? I wouldn't have that experience. I wouldn't have that memory now. Problem with that comes when it's uh, when it. Put up in an MMO community. Search how finding parties to do simple stuff is impossible in Season of Discovery on WoW. I mean, it, it's... If you mean Season of Discovery as... I'm assuming that's like an area or something. But that happens in FF. There's stuff that's impossible to find parties for in, in FF. But there's discords for it. There are discords you can go to in FF14 that explicitly queue for things. I have joined one. I have promptly left it because I didn't want to waste their time because I I wasn't going to stick around. And I got automated messages that was like, hey, if you're not going to be active, uh, we will auto-kick you. So I left. No detriment to me and no detriment to them. No ill will towards them either. They were a serious Discord that queued people for inactive duties, and that exists. We might do that one time. Maybe. I don't know. Rather than the journey. Imagine coming home from a long day of school or work and you're getting sweated on in Fall Guys. Imagine you're over there just trying to chill, you know, you're on this little cutesy game that's like Wipeout, and out of nowhere, TTV Try Hard for Life literally just claps you every single map. And it's like, dude, you can't even have fun anymore. And since mm -hmm. everyone's tryharding, games are now catering to the bad players. One thing that games have been implementing is this thing called skill based matchmaking. If you don't know what it is, well, I'll basically explain. Think of a lobby where all the top players from a bunch of different games all get into a lobby with each other and go head to head basically ranked play but with no bonus rewards or anything you just kind of get into a lobby with the best players without getting any specific reward in casual play and the thing about skill based matchmaking is that it's unfair because the good players are being punished for being good at the game and it gets to this point where it's like winning feels like a chore rather than actual fun because back then if you truly wanted to sweat you would go into like a ranked game mode or something but now if you're a tryhard you're gonna play every single other try hard 24 7 just because you're good at the game back then games like call of duty what they would do you would join a lobby and if you wanted to leave that lobby you would just leave it and if you wanted to stay after the game you would stay but now after a game is finished they just transport you to a whole different lobby that's an important <laughs> All right, I had a point I wanted to make. Hold on. Well, <laughs> okay, that, <laughs> that was a frame perfect pause. That's one thing that I will say I can't think of the last time I've seen happen. When has, I don't know if you guys have, when has anybody here, or I'm going to put this on YouTube too, if, you're, if you made it this far into the video, this applies to you. When has anybody actually been in a in a game that's got a casual lobby recently over the last, I don't know, 10 years where the game ends and you're able to just hang out in the lobby and play with the same people? And if you can name one game or two game, cool, happy for you. Can you name five or six, though, that have happened 
or have been released in the last decade where that's the case that are popular at all. Because that was the funnest part about Modern Warfare 2 and like Black Ops, where you join a lobby and you get like a rematch button. Or you, you, you're basically put into a rotating map queue with that group of people, and then you either leave or stay. So if you want to keep playing with them, you can. And I'm going to be honest, I think that's what's killed community a lot in a lot of these games. The community building moment has been removed. That community building moment was popping into a lobby and staying in it for three hours with somebody and just slowly talking to them and slowly be becoming friends with them. Now it's, you get one fucking game. You get 20 minutes of one match where you have, I don't know, 30 seconds of time to talk to them. And the excuse that's given now is, well, just send them a friend request. I didn't talk to them. I didn't get a chance to even bond with this person. Why the fuck would I send them a friend request? Why would I? Why would I do that? You know what game did have it? I can name one. Omega Strikers. And it was really fucking fun. The amount of games that I had in Omega Strikers, where we did it on stream one time, and we may have done it during that stream, where we got a really good match, where we went back and forth for five minutes in overtime. No one knew who was going to win. We were struggling. We're, we're all sweating. We're all having a great time. We get to the lobby. Nobody leaves. Everybody hit that fucking rematch button. We all want to go again. What games do that anymore? What what games actually let you do that anymore? Don't know. I just try to join groups. <sighs> That's what I mean. Like joining groups is fine, but like, can you can you read queue with them easily? In the MOBA I play, you can queue with the same randos again as a team, and that's nice. I'm gonna be honest. I would I would wager Dota and like League have a stronger community than Call of Duty at this point in regards to people actually forming genuine friendships through them. Even though those games are super toxic, I would wager they do just because of that alone. I have no evidence to back this up. It's strictly my anecdotal experiences supporting this in my head. If you want to if you want to bond to people go to go to a Gex dungeon. I assume there's another letter that's supposed to be there. What happened to Toit? What is Toit? What? What's Toit? Is that tight, but you're British? What's toit mean? What happened to it? <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know what's happened to it. It is really frustrating. Because no one talks about it anymore. But I feel like it's important. I feel like it's an important part of not even gaming, just community building. To allow people to have time to to kind of form those bonds. And it's my problem with FF14. It's my problem with Final Fantasy's weird... Well, not Final Fantasy as a franchise. Final Fantasy 14 as a game trying to do crafting or fishing or blacksmithing. Insert any of the disciples of the hand or land. When do I have time to talk to somebody while I'm mining? If I go to Diadem, it is it is a rat race to run to the node, mine it. I have 30 seconds now, maybe. I get off the node. I have to go to another node, mine it. I have 30 seconds now. Get off the node, run to another node. And it's not a rat race because someone might take it. They're all individual. but nobody's actually standing around. Whereas in RuneScape, which I showed you guys yesterday how slow some of the things were in that game. Granted, I didn't sit down extensively and go, look at how slow combat is or how slow mining is. When you're doing something in RuneScape, you're sitting there for a minute. You're, you're hanging out and you're not going to walk around very much. So you can actually sit there and talk to people. I have so many people that I know in my head. One of them, I don't know if I'll ever see you again. K guy, if you're out there, if you ha if someone had the name K guy and you played RuneScape back in like 2007 and you lived in Europe and you were complaining to people online being me about like your dad or like a family issue 
at 3 a.m. in the morning while we mined rocks in Alkari Desert. I remember that guy. I remember doing that because I didn't have to walk around. I could just hang out, talk to people, and play the game. And that's what you could do in these lobbies. You could hang out, play the game, talk to people. And if you don't want to talk to those people or be around them anymore, you leave the lobby. But now it's, oh man, I found someone that's kind of fun and cool and funny, but the lobby's over now. We're going to be split up and stuck with a bunch of new randoms who I don't even know. The socialization aspect of multiplayer has been horribly just destroyed. Join a lobby, and if you wanted to leave that lobby, you would just leave it. And if you wanted to stay after the game, you would stay. But now, after a game is finished, they just transport you to a whole different lobby with everyone else who also did good. And it's like, now you gotta go head to head with all the big dogs just because you won one game. I remember Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. That had some of the worst skill-based matchmaking ever. That game was borderline unplayable because if you won one game, you would be playing the freaking Optic roster from freaking 2014 just from winning one game and another way of games yep. catering to bad players fortnite adding bots into their games just so you can feel better about yourself let's be real it is 2023 nobody is a default anymore in fortnite i mean back then yes there were people who were bad at the game but nobody is so bad that they're literally running into a wall 24 7 in fortnite so now it's like there's no middle ground between the good and the bad players it's like if you're good you're being punished and if you're bad you're being rewarded. There's actually this tweet by Faye Sway that says, the downfall of video games started when kids complained about people being good at the game. I remember when I was a kid and saw a master prestige in COD, I didn't tell him to take a shower or go outside. I sent that MF a friend request. And that's facts. Mm -hmm. Instead of actually putting in the work to be good, a lot of people just sit there and complain and now games are kind of catering to them. But one game that I say that kind of bridged the middle ground between the really good players and the really bad players is Street Fighter 6. One thing that Street Fighter 6 did, they added something called modern controls and classic controls. Classic controls, basically you have to do more to push out a combo. And if you do that successfully, then that combo does more damage. But if you play modern controls, you only hit square or something and it'll do a full combo. And those combos do less damage. So it kind of bridges the gap between good and bad players. But that's a whole fighting game. How can this be fixed in like games that are like FPS or something like that? In my honest opinion, I say that FPS games should just go back to like the regular lobbies you know back then you could join yeah. the lobby scope out the lobby see who's like the freaking best players and stuff and if they were a little too good for your level you could leave if you wanted to like i don't think that you should be transported into the freaking universe of the top 12 call of duty masters after you win one game i feel like there should always be that option to stay if you want to stay or leave if you want to leave it, like i i don't think we like skill based matchmaking is bad it's how it's it's being executed. Uh, Apex is a good example of this. Apex doesn't use explicit skill-based matchmaking anymore. Apex is kind of gross about it, probably the most gross, where it actually takes into account like how much you've won, how little you've played, how often you've played, and uses that to like make a suggested skill-based matchmaking rank where, oh, you haven't been on for six months. Let's ease you back in. Let's give you some like easy games to make you feel like you should be higher. Make you feel like you should be a good player. So they throw you in with some people that are worse than you because you haven't played for a while. But they, they kind of overshoot it. So they put you in with some really terrible, terrible jobbers. And you win. You kick their ass. And you go, oh man, I missed Apex. Man, Apex was so much fun. I still got it too. Man, I'm still good at Apex. You win a few games. Then they throw you up against your actual rank where you probably should be. You get your ass kicked. And that's usually like the day after or so. And it's the next day. And you're already like in. You've made that commitment to Apex. And you go, man, I fucking hate this game. Today's just not my day. It'll be better tomorrow. Maybe it lets it be better tomorrow. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't matter that you actually practiced or tried or got into your, into your groove. Maybe it locks you back into some games with some bad people again. Now you're back in. Now you're not upset anymore. Now you want to keep going. Maybe you hit the wall again. You're never actually being challenged is the point that that system makes. Is 
it's not challenging you. It's Pavloving you into staying in the game. And this is where toxicity comes from. And I'm going to point to League for this. You can tell that something's happening. You might not notice it, like consciously, but I swear you will subconsciously know that the game is fucking with you because you can feel how good you are at a game and you know how good you are and you know you shouldn't be losing this much. It's weird that you're getting your shit kicked in this much, this often. But man, those games where it lets you win over and over again, those are really fun. Those are really good. It keeps you playing. Keeps you feeling really, really positive. And then you get destroyed and your negativity is that much worse. You're, you're way more outwardly aggressive to other players now. You're way more hateful. You're short-tempered now. It's why I don't play Apex anymore. It's why I don't play a lot of competitive shooters anymore. Because the, the way the ranking system kind of manipulates your opinion of the game is such a dumpster fire that all it does is hurt your mental health. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're on com runway, not the submissions. Okay, mobile I play bots your matches or if you lose too much, I don't like it at all. <laughs> Do you mean like it bots your players on your team or it bots the enemies? It's like old arcade machine AI. It's kind of just that, just as disingenuous. It is kind of just as disingenuous as like the Street Fighter Two reading your inputs AI, where instead of you genuinely, you know, being okay at it also someone joined the disc ipsen is this hold on who was it that popped in that lazy if you're still here are you ipsen in discord i saw someone pop in around the time that you popped into stream i'm just asking if you're still here because you'll have to click on the little i'm not a robot thing to actually get access to the server you don't have to fill out a capture or anything it's just a button to make sure bots don't get in the enemies and it does it for low ladder too. <sighs> I'm honestly keep skill based matchmaking, but keep it for competitive players. Why is it in casual at all? Casual should be nothing. You want to know how to do casual? Go play Counter Strike. Go play Counter Strike. Go to casual and go to the fucking server browser where you just hop in with who knows how good they are. Those are the funnest matches because then everyone on the entire team gets to focus on one guy that's like the god of the lobby. And then you have community moments. It's fun. There's no toxicity in those moments because it's natural. But I feel like you can tell whenever something unnatural is occurring in the way the game kind of positions you in the rankings as a player. Am I thinking too much about it? Maybe, but I, my anecdotal evidence is stronger than anything that I have that is scientifically measured at this point because I haven't seen any. If there's any other... If, if, I don't know. If anybody has anything deeper than that, like, sure, share it with me. Because it's... An, does he have, like, the little heat warning sticker on his lamp still back there? My man, take that off. What are you doing? Pull this off. Reach in there and pull this off. Get rid of that. Pull this tag off. It's weird. It's bothering me. It's bothering a no-name streamer on Twitch. Ranked is fine. The only issue is that competitive aspect of it. it can't really spurt uh, on the game. Mostly played by 6 to 12 year olds. Wait, what do you mean? There was nothing wrong with those lobbies back then. It's just like games just wanted to cater to the bad players, you know? So it's honestly just like gaming is just honestly a huge sweat fest. And that rounds back to like the ultimate question of this video. Did streamers really ruin gaming? In my honest opinion, yes. I a thousand percent believe that streamers in esports ruined gaming. Because there is no reason why people should be sweating at a game where you literally farm cabbages. How do you even sweat in farming simulator? XL, that's how you sweat. How? Let me know in the comments. Do you y'all think streamers slash pro players ruin gaming or like what's your guys take on this whole situation let me know but yeah this is going to wrap up the video if you guys made this far i appreciate you if you guys enjoyed this video then i highly recommend you guys check out my most recent video where i talk about why everyone hates prank channels but yeah with all okay uh i'm gonna watch that later that was a good video that was actually really good i will say this video could easily be longer he could easily go into how streamers have skewed game development 
and specifically back to matchmaking. We talked about it yesterday, but man, I keep saying that, but we did. We talked about it yesterday, but it's so many changes to competitive games come because of like three people, three streamers. Will will say or complain about something in a game, and a, a change will be pushed to the game. And I don't know if it's because the developer or publisher is doing it because they're scared of, you know, the streamer stopping the playing of said game, which means the player base is going to dry up a little bit. Which it has to be. I'm I'm going to be cynical. It has to be that, and that's that's so fucked up. It, it is it is killing games. It, it does not help. Devs should not be listening to streamers at all. If, if anything, devs need to be listening to the actual data that they're receiving from the player base when they're playing the game. A raw physical heat map is going to do more to enforce or inform the devs as to player movements on a map or player bias to certain choke points than a streamer who's played the game for 50,000 hours who has a personal bias against a certain part of the map or something. It, it, hard data, hard analytical data is better than just someone complaining who has a big viewer base. And COD has done it. Counter-Strike devs have done it too. Counter-Strike devs are the ones that probably did it first where people were complaining about damage numbers on some weapons and then they put out patch notes that said reduce damage numbers on... Leo, you know what I'm talking about because you brought it up in chat before. But they put out a patch note that was, yeah, we, we tweaked it. And everybody went, oh my God, they listened. It's better. They didn't change a single thing. They didn't touch any of that code. They just said they did. And then the player base was happy. It, it it's crazy. We got like an hour left. I don't know how much Dark Souls we could do in like an hour. How's farming some doing on Twitch? Oh, we got a hundred plus viewers on on one person's channel. Oh, it's like two people. Two people are streaming. There's a VTuber playing farming sim. In a in a cow kigurumi. I love sales Dark Souls three. <laughs> Look! I said we would yap today. I'm sorry.